make sure you listen to my daddy's podcast right now. Is it Bash on the Room? And this is the Car Face Up Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Ty Hill. Listen, y'all already know what we like to do on these episodes of I Declare War with the Cards Face Up. We like to bring people on here that bring back those nostalgic memories. Those, those, listen, oh man, today's guest, he's one of those special ones, y'all. Y'all know I like to build those moments, you know, those moments that smell like something. And this brother here, he's one of five from a group, right? All the way from Atlanta, Georgia. When I talk about, or when I think about these brothers, you feel me? And they impact to my childhood. I think about Nintendo. I think about my first crush. I think about uh, go karts, the playground, airbrush jumpsuits. Uh, what else? Clothes, starter, starter jackets, hat to the back. Um, fun with the homies. When we talk about their impact to the 80s and the 90s babies, these brothers were most influential to us. And shout out to all the previous legends. You know, we got the Jackson 5. And you know, we got the new additions. But my generation... My generation, them 80s and 90s babies, they wanted to be like Chris, Mark, Red, Dave, Ro. So without further ado, without further ado, we got the brother, Romel, Roro, Chapman from another bad creation on here today. Man. Peace, 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 peace. Peace you see and blessings. It. You see it? Come on, man. Yeah. Man, peace <laughs> and blessings. Yo, this is Roro. Is y'all understanding what this means? For those, <laughs> for, for my listeners that know me, y'all already know. It it it, it goes Michael, <laughs> and then it goes ABC. Wow. And somewhere in, in, around all of that is we talking about the boys. Y'all know my man Hakeem been on here. We talking oh, about you know buddy. Soul for real. We talking about Drew Hill. We talking about everybody. But when we talking about me wanting to be somebody. It went from Michael and the Jackson Five to another bad creation, and man, I, I am blessed to have y'all on here, bro. No problem, blessed, brother. Man. Anytime, anytime. Thank you for having me, man. I, I like treating it. you, brother. Oh man, I'm still here, so I can't complain. Bless, bless. You're looking good, man. I want to get. Thank you, my I want to get. I want to get right, right, just right into the the mix of it, right? Let's um, go. I want to start from the beginning. Break down the family dynamic of another bad creation because I don't know if people realize beyond friends, most of y'all are related in some type of way, right? Right. Well, um, Red and Mark, they're brothers. Me and Chris is cousins. And Dave, he might as well be, we all we all might as well be brothers anyway. But you know, that's just how it go. We started out when we was young, man. Dave was like, when we started our group, Dave was four years old. Yeah, we started young, man, because we was coming up in the environment, you know, the street game and the drug game was picking up and all the youngsters was getting involved in that. And we just wanted to do something different, man. Shout out to Hakeem, who spoke his name. Shout out to Hakeem, Taj, Bilal, Kyrie, they pops. We saw them dudes on MTV and we was like, man, we could do, we want to do that. That's what we want to do. You know what I'm saying? So we started us a group. And we used to perform their songs and talent shows. And um, that's where it started for us. Wow. Wow. I got I got a question about them, too. But I'm going to ask you once we get into it. So how did y'all actually start the group of Another Bad Creation? Because y'all young, like you just now said, he was poor. Like, right. How-, well, how the group originally started, Chris and Red and Mark and Dave, they went to school together. I stayed on the other side of town. But Chris is my cousin. So I would go over there on the weekend and kick it with them. And uh, Red and Chris already had the group started. And I always been into rap. So I used to have little raps and stuff. And they was like, kick one of them raps. And I would, that's how I got in the group. Then we met Dave. They was fresh from Boston because Dave aunt, used to be in a relationship with Ralph Tresman. Mm. So Dave is from Boston. So we met his mom. She was like, my son, he can dance better than all y'all. And we was like, oh, yeah, go get him. And then when we met Dave and locked in, we, that's how we started our group. Wow. So, y'all, and, and that's what makes it, I think that's what creates that uh, that beautiful line, again, of what separates a lot of the fly-by-night groups versus the groups that we named. You know, the High King and the boys, the uh, Jackson 5 and Michael. You know, y'all already came together. 
as kids. Y'all brought it together before managers and things got involved. And a lot yeah. of groups was brought together by managers and stuff like that. And we don't see them last long. So how do we get how do we get K Wells inside the the dynamic of five? And how do we get GA inside there? You, 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 now, now, now I know you know what you're talking about because you're asking the right questions. Okay. <laughs> so check it out. Our neighborhood, College Park, Georgia, Gobby Road, two chains talk about it. The White Howard basketball player, he's from over there. The South Side, College Park, Jermaine Dupree, Dallas Austin. Every, the South Side was really what's really happening where it really started for the music in Atlanta, for it to really be on MTV and stuff like that. The South Side. TLC, everybody, College Park. But anyway, our neighborhood, we had a, a plaza next to it. So on the weekends, you know, it was a lot of money being made. Folks was on the street doing their thing. You had beauty salons in the plaza, barber shops, ice cream shops. So our whole thing was like, man, we got to get us some money too. So we ain't want to do the drug thing. So we'd go out there and dance, you know, do our little routines. And, um, we, dan- we, would dan- we would dance anywhere for anybody, you know. And we went to the beauty shop, which happened to be owned by K. Wells' sister. And K. Wells, he was in doing talent shows and stuff with Divine Stevens, Akon, and them, the one who over that. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. College Park, all this the South Side now. He was doing talent shows and in groups with them. So she told him about us, like, hey, it's these little boys over here, man. You need to come check them out. So he came and checked us out and he was like man i want to manage y'all and we didn't know nothing about no manager so it was summertime you know everybody mamas and daddies was working so we introduced them and they was like you know what if you're gonna do something positive with these kids man for the summer take them and he took us man and we start practicing and we would practice like five hours a day every day we'll practice anywhere we'll practice in mcdonald's parking lot with a boom box in somebody's backyard, we was at it. You understand what I'm saying? And he put something in us, man, because when we first started out, our routines was, you know, little kids. But when he put his hands on us, we start rehearsing. We would be over his mama's house, and she had big mirrors. And he used to have us do the routine with our back to the mirror where we couldn't see till we got it right. And then he was like, man, turn around, and we'll do it. Boom. And everybody would be perfect. And it was kind of scary, like, oh, shit. Do it again. And it was perfect every time. It was like, oh, shh. So that's what really made us like, hey, boy, oh, we we doing this. So practice, it, it became fun for us. Like, boy, we, we, and we wasn't in the street. And our parents knew we was in good hands. So that's how K. Wells came about. And, man, I just watched a little kid. I posted it on my Instagram the other day. Seven-year-old boy. He know all our songs, bro. And it's crazy because I'm looking at him and I'm thinking back about K. Wells. Like, how did you know how to teach us all this when you was like 20? Who taught you? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? How did you learn this? But yeah, he he put a lot into us, man. And grateful. Grateful for him. Yo, that's uh I talked to K. Wells uh, probably about a couple months ago and shit. Shout out yeah. to him, man. That's, that's yeah, that's, shout that's out to legend. K. Wells. That's underrated, legend, man. underrated Jim, the real godfather of Atlanta, for real. Real, real talk. And I love, yeah. like, when you speak of those places of Atlanta, like, I, I, I love what us and them is doing right now, JD and them mm-hmm. is doing, showing the skating ring and stuff. Oh, like, man, because yeah. Y'all had that in y'all videos and stuff with yeah. the dancing on it. Y'all wasn't skating on it, but y'all was dancing on it. And But that's the Atlanta that I, I remember visioning, the TLC Atlanta. The, uh, yeah. You know, that that 90s Atlanta is just a different place, man. And y'all, y'all yeah. really captured the essence of that as kids. So it was crazy to, to, to know how much impact or influence y'all even had on the group itself. And again, it wasn't just one of those we get a manager and he put us together. He tell us what to wear. Y'all had this, 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 this style. Y'all had this wanting yeah. to do it that, that up from the beginning. Yep. Cause we started our group like 1987, 88, and we ain't really come out till like 91. So we was doing every talent show, every showcase. We would go to underground Atlanta on the weekends and every day in the summer, put the hat on the ground. And, and, and get to it. And man, we that's how we would get our money to go get a new outfit for the next show, 
get us a bigger boom box for the sound to be louder when we in these outside environments. We would performing at birthday parties. Like we was, yeah, man. We was we were hey, putting bro, in that work. I know um I know we on the the, the, the video. Look, let me see what's what's in the middle. Look in the middle of your screen. Right here. Nope. Like straight. Just look straight. And then this down. The, down. Don't look at the camera. Look to your left. I want you to look like you actually oh, looking at my le- your left or my left. Shit, your left. <laughs> you can was- not that not that damn far. Cause look, I want you to get your best light, brother. I want you because the girls oh. gonna be brighting me. The girls gonna be hitting you me. Talking about, here? You want me no, no, you was way? good on light. It just looked like you trying to look at the camera. And if you're oh, looking okay. at where your camera dots is at, you're gonna be looking like you looking to the side the whole interview. And I want oh. you to. When the girls start calling me, talking about you had Roro looking the opposite way. I don't want no trauma with them ladies, man. They 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 still okay. ABC. <laughs> I don't want I don't want no drama with them either. <laughs> yeah. Look look look, hey Ro. So y'all 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 get with K Wells. K Wells put y'all through the trenches, which is very very similar to the New Edition trenches, the Jackson Five trenches. Uh, he put y'all through that. How do y'all get to Biff 10? I know that, and then I want to tell me if I'm wrong because you kind of touched on it. The Michael uh, Bivens came from the Ralph Trezvan connection. Is that true? That is true. Because, um, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me rewind a little bit. Okay, in the beginning, it was Kay Wells, it was Dave Cousin named Duty. Roy Cruther, Big Miz, named man, he rolled with Ralph all the time, big, big dude. And it was me and Chris Cousin named Sean Singleton. So that was our support system. They was the ones who was making sure we was right. So Duty and Miz was tight with Ralph like this. So when we was really getting our stuff together, they was like, man, we're going to take y'all out to L.A. to Ralph, we're going to cut a demo. So we drove in the car. All five ABC, K Wells, Sean Singleton, Dave Cousin Duty, and man, we was like in the Ford Taurus and we drove from Atlanta to LA. The shit took us about four days. We were riding. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we was on a mission, man. You know what I'm saying? We was on a real mission. So when we got there, you know, Ralph wasn't even home. So we was rehearsing, just doing what we do anyway. So when he came, he was like, oh, shit, that's Ralph. Like, you know, we had seen famous people at home, like at Lynn's Barbershop on Garby Road, College Park. On a Saturday, you can go in there and see Dominique Wilkins getting the cut, Holyfield. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But Ralph was somebody, we used to perform all their songs, too. So it was like, oh, wow, this really the cat. You know what I'm saying? So we met him and chopped it with him. We stayed at his house, too. Shout out to Ralph, man. Peace. Thank you for everything. Shout out your brother Andre too, man. Love y'all cats, man. Good dudes. And um, he started playing on the keyboard. He made us a little beat. We had a demo. The song was called It's Over. You know what I'm saying? And it was dope. You know what I'm saying? And the next day, it was a park out there in L.A. where everybody used to go shoot ball at. Mm-hmm. So we went up there. You know what I'm saying? We was kicking it. And Mike Bill was there. He was hooping. And I don't even know if he knew we was with Ralph, but he came outside like, hey, man, who is y'all? What y'all do? And we was like, man, we, you know, we're a group. And he was like, for real? A group? What kind of group? Let me see something. So we busted out right there in the park. We were in L.A., still ready to get busy. You know what I'm saying? So we did. I think he was like, man, you know, I got to, you know, he had a situation going on with the Bill 10. So him, Ralph, K. Wells, them. They sat down and discussed how the play was going to go. And Bill scooped us up. And we was on BL10. All right, so now we can get into, because, all right, we're going to get into uh, cool, cooling at the playground, right? Mm-hmm. You know, which is the longest title I think I ever seen on that album. For years, right. I did not know that was the actual title was cooling at the playground. You know, I did you not know. know you know was on it to ask oh, yeah. right? And, <laughs> I was driven, right? So we 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 start working on the album at this point, right? Is this when GA gets introduced to the group? Because 
I just found so, you you got Dallas Austin is doing production on that. Dallas Austin is GA Big Brother, right? Yeah. So let me let me let me let me back it up one more time because I I left something out. Like back in the day when we was doing talent shows, right? Dallas always been doing beats and in the music. You know what I'm saying? So we would do we would go to Greenbrier Mall. They had the little video music box thing where you go in there, do the demo, make the video. We had that and we seen Dallas in the mall. And K Wells had and Dallas had knew each other, I guess, from doing talent shows and whatnot. So GA was with them. And when we first recorded Aisha, when we was doing the pictures and stuff, GA was there. And GA was just, man, for him and me to be the same age, he was like ahead of his time. You know what I'm saying? He was like, no, nah, man, don't wear it like that. You got to cuff your pants like this and pull it up, tighten your overall. Let me fix your shirt. And he was just putting us together. We were like, man, this dude right here is on top of his game. So this one, we was doing a photo shoot for Aisha. Cause like when we was recording, GA would always be around and he would always, you know, had a hairbrush. Like, come here, man, let me brush your hair. You finna go out there, some girls out there, you know, put some chapstick on GA, always be on point like that. So we do the photo shoot. We sitting outside. Dallas had the black BMW. We sitting outside. K Wells, Dallas, and Biv, they go upstairs. We sitting outside in the parking lot and we just talking, bonding, kicking it, talking about, man, we going, man, we really, man, this is unbelievable. This shit crazy. Then when they came back down there, like, all right, y'all, we got a new idea, man. We finna put GA in your group. He gonna be the hype man. And we gonna roll like that. And we was like, boy, it's perfect. Cause he gonna make sure everybody on point. It's, it, it just fit perfect. It just fit perfect. So that's how GA got in the group. I think, man, shout out to GA too. Uh, I oh, think yeah. GA, GA don't get enough love and you giving him his credit and his flowers oh, just man, now I got to. of the I got importance to. of him. I don't yes. think he get enough love. Yo, that GA but put you know in what? work. He did and he do. Good dude, man. 100%. My brother. You know what I'm saying? For real. My brother. That's, 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 that's real. So, all right, so we working on the album. So the first, the first single is the first song we work on is Aisha. Yeah, the first song we did was Aisha, and, and, and you know, when we the boys had been out and they was doing their thing, so they was like, man, at Motown, they was like, man, I need some kids. It's gonna be kind of hard, you know, to, to, you know, so we ain't even gonna do no whole album. We just gonna do a single deal. So we do the single, they put it out in, in Atlanta, it pick up cause we from there, but they was like, man, you know, that's dope. But man, we gotta go to New York. Cause this was at the time when New York was the end all be all. They like, well, mm-hmm. New York pick it up. Y'all little niggas out of here. But if New York don't mess with it, you know, it's gonna be hard for y'all. So they go, they, they plays it in New York and they say they played it like three times back to back in New York. So once New York picked it up, they was like, man, we got to get another single. We got to get another single. We got to. So we rushed in the studio to go do Playground. And that's mm-hmm. when GA got on the mic. Oh, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's when GA <laughs> got his in. You know what I mean? And then when Playground took off, we shot the video in New York just so New York would, would mess with us. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So we shot the playground video in New York. And um, mm-hmm. after the playground took off, they was like, boy, get them boys in the studio. They got to do the album. Rush, rush. We was, we was, you know, under the gun. They was like, well, we got to, we got to get the album done by Deadline Dallas. Who going to do it? Dallas, be it what, who? The boys got to go. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that came about. I didn't know that. So. All right, so we 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 back to we we on the album. And what is a writing session like for another bad creation? Because you you touched on something earlier, y'all was writing. You know what? So how much of that is how much how much of well I'm um, row row coming in third. Now it's about that time that I get hurt. Is well on the on the on the on our first album we wrote 
two songs. We wrote, we had a rap on Spider-Man that we all wrote and we had a song called ABC where we was writing on. But like far as I eat your playground, that was all Dallas and Bill that came up with that. And GA had his little freestyle where he was coming in with, with his with his parts, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, majority of the time we would just, they would just let us just do us and just watch us and be like, okay. And they would just watch how we kick it and make a song about how we how we was. Now, how hard was that? How, how does that transpire to y'all though when they bring those lyrics to you trying to teach you a, a five, anywhere from five years old to what, 11 at the time of reciting Man, these lyrics? I think, I think that's, that, that is a, a thing I can't answer because that even, I still don't even understand how they did that. You know what I'm saying? Because it was six of us and we wasn't like no, y'all sit still and be right here, I'll be right back. We was not them kind of kids. You know, they say sit down, we all upstairs, <laughs> we busting the recycle bottles at the studio. Like we was not sit down and be quiet kids. So I just think, man, that with the right amount of everything, the, they, they had to be like, like K. Wells, he had to be like the right amount of mean, but he had to be the right amount of friendly. He had to be the right amount of big brother. He had to be the right amount of somewhat dad. So I really don't under, I really got to talk to that man and just ask him. Cause last time I talked to him, I was like, bro, how did you like, how did you do that, man? And that what looking back, being the age I am now and thinking of the stuff we used to do, I don't think I could deal with six kids like like how we was every day. And you put money into them without knowing if it's gonna be a return. Yeah, but I don't think with us and Kev though, I don't even think it was really about the money. I really don't. I think it was more so on the love because when we met him, we was nine, five. Dave was five. So I don't even think money, I mean, money is, you know, always gonna be an issue, but I think it was more love, man. Cause we had real love. Dallas, we we had, we, I, I think we came in so early, all of, even Kev, even Dallas, even Bill. Bill, what, 22? Like 20. That's hey. what I'm saying, so. I don't even really think money, I know money is the main thing, but I think it was more of, boy, we really do, we doing something. Like, boy, we is from College Park, Georgia. And we way out here in California on Soul Train, man. We doing something. So I think it was more, started out on the love, but you know, of course the business and the and the, the other people gonna come in with the, with the, with the flim flam, but love, man, I think that would really, what it was. That's what it is. So working on it. So now when they rush in the single, is that when we get jealous, girl? Because uh oh man, you and I want y'all to know, first of all, Playground and Aisha is not my favorite song. I learned to love them after, right? My favorite song is the remake of Jealous Girl. Because yo, y'all, I remember sitting inside of uh it was, in Baltimore, it was Greenmount for all my people that Listen from here, it was the first place I ever seen that had a TV in a store, right? And Burger King had a TV. We ain't had cable all the time where we had the bootleg cable that my father had the cable box in one room. <laughs> and you had to watch what the fuck he was watching on every TV in the house, right? So yeah. you feel me? The box, this when the box was jumping, boy. The box. You see, I, I knew the numbers. It came up and it was just them five niggas in an all white singing and shit. I say, yo! Yeah. Bitch. And you know what? I want. We, um, we shot that video in Boston in the Roxbury Rec where New Edition them used to play basketball at. Mm. So yeah. So that was yeah. what? That's in the projects, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yo, that is crazy. That's 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 some history right there, man. And now yeah. the, the 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 street performance that y'all done coming up on y'all own. I see that y'all it, it, y'all learned so much because I'm watching y'all, you know, the gestures and shit, everybody's shirt off, trying to get, 
these is little niggas yeah. trying to make, make yeah. women excited. It was crazy, right? And I'm, again, I am one of those niggas like Pac said it the best. Pac said, like with the females, like and that's how you get the females. It is <laughs> always aim for the females. So another bad creation, the females like them. So shit, I'm going to learn to see why. I, and man, when that, right. that, that video, hey girl, why you so jealous? <laughs> yeah. So I got a question for you, Ro. Here's a real question. I don't think I, I don't get too many interviews with y'all from people anyway, but I ain't never seen this ad. Who version is better? Another bad creation or new addition? You know what? I'm just going to be real. The original going to always be better to me. You know what I'm saying? Like they remaking the Jordans and with all these colors on them. Which ones you like the best? The, the OGs, right? So, you know, we was blessed to be able to do that, you know, because we used to perform that song. You know, in talent shows, we used to perform it. And then when they was like, man, we're going to redo Jealous Girl. And we was like, damn, that's, oh, we already know the words. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we already, then in talent shows, we already know, had a routine and everything. So that was like, okay, yeah, uh, we can do that one. Y'all niggas, I don't even think people realize even, and I, I, I disagree. Shout out to New Edition. I love y'all. Y'all already know. Mr. Telephone, all that shit. I fucking love New Edition. You feel me? Uh, Bobby is the greatest. Uh, Bobby is the realest, too. It, 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 man, I can't wait. I, I, that's somebody that I got to meet, man. I got to meet. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Delvin from Jodeci just now took us. They had a tour in Baltimore. When Mr. Delvin got me in there and shit, but I didn't get a chance to get with New Edition, man. I wanted to so bad. Um yeah. Joe to see them, them some of our good buddies too. We used to kick it with them on the road. We we met them. I'm gonna tell you a story about them. 